Making cutscenes is time consuming. For this game I'm just making an intro cutscene and Cinemachine makes that a little easier, but there is a trick to it. It starts with a timeline, and if you're familiar with video editing this gets a little bit easier, but I'll start from scratch just so you can see it. I do have one that exists, so I'm going to actually disable this, so that way it's not interfering with what we're about to do. What I want to do is make a new folder that stores all of my virtual cameras, so I'm just going to call this VCams. Easy peasy. Inside this game object I'm going to create some uh, Cinemachine virtual cameras. I'm going to go create a virtual camera. I'm going to drop it into that game object. We're going to create a Cinemachine dolly camera with track. Grab those, drop them into my VCams game object, and let's do one more virtual camera. It's camera 5. I'm fine with that. It can be called camera 5. So these cameras by themselves don't really do anything. If you look at the hierarchy here, I've got VCam 3, VCam 4, and VCam 5. It might be kind of confusing which one goes with this track 2 right here, the Cinemachine path that we've made, um, but that's going to be VCam 4. So if you see, if you open up your VCam 4, it's got Dolly Track 2 right here, and its path position goes from 0 to 1. So it's that's what the, the purpose of the Dolly Track is for. It's just a, an indicator of where the camera sits along that track. That's all that is. So let's start by getting these cameras into place. We'll start with VCam 3, and we'll just find it here. So I feel like the camera would go really well right here, so we're going to grab camera 3 and we're just going to... You can tell which way it's pointing by the uh, lines coming off of it, so let's just change its rotation real quick. I think I'd like it to want to start over here, so, so this is where that camera is going to start. Now, if we go to the game view, this VCam 3 is not the one because our priority is too low, so let's make that priority 11. And that's our camera. So we can see that the rotation's off a little bit here. We'll just make the Z a zero, call it a day, and that should do it. So now this is the start. I want it to be a little bit more this away. Here we go. Again, that's just the position of this first camera. Now let's grab this dolly camera and move it to a better location. And the camera's parented to it, because it's going to find its position and be very happy with it. That. I'm actually not happy with that position. Hang on a second. So there we go. And again, if we make this priority like a 12, because it's going to go to our preview is going to go to whatever camera's got the highest priority. Um, okay, cool. So that's our dolly cam. And again, its path position is zero to one. And we can also change where the path is set to. So you want to make sure you uh, hit uh, the hotkey is W to move the the transform position, which is going to give you these uh, ends zero and one right here. Uh, they're basically waypoints. You can add more waypoints. So if you just hit this little plus sign, you can add a bunch more waypoints, or you can take them away. Um, I only want two waypoints, so that works for me really well. I'm going to slide this one over and slide here over a little bit too, and that's good enough for what I want to do. I want three cameras. Boom, boom, boom. And then the third camera, camera five, we are going to put behind the car. It's actually in a really good spot right now. Let's make this priority, what, like 13, 15? Who cares what we make it? Doesn't much matter. That's cool. I like that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new timeline. And we're going to attach it to the VCAMS game object right here. We're just going to hit create. It's going to ask us to save a timeline. We're going to save it in, in prefab. It's going to be called VCAMS timeline. Totally cool. I like that. We'll save it. Boom, we got a timeline. Cool. Well, now what do we do? The first thing you have to do when you have a timeline is you've got to add a Cinemachine track. And this is going to look for the brain. The Cinemachine brain is already in the follow cam, and it knows that. So we just we just have that in here. That's, that's all we want to do. We just want to have the brain in there. And then we have to have some clips. So we're going to add a Cinemachine shot. Boom. Got a Cinemachine shot. Well, what camera do we want to put on this shot? So we take the Cinemachine shot, we're going to grab camera 3, and drag it to the virtual camera that we want the shot to be. And then if we play this, it's going to... If we play this in game view, it's going to show us camera 3. There it is. And it doesn't do anything for now at all. That's okay. I'm going to make this about 3 seconds. To do that, I'm just going to shorten it to about the 180 mark right here. It's about 3 seconds. See that? You can even have it ease in and out. It actually snaps to the number of seconds. So then we want to do that again. We want to add a Cinemachine shot. It's going to be over here. I'm going to drop this down to about 360. Bingo. And then we want to take our, not the dolly track, but the VCAM 4 and plop it on here. Okay. Which also doesn't do much. 
these cameras are cuts. So we're gonna, if I take my scrubber, that's this thing here, it's called a scrubber, and I slide it over, nothing happens, it's gonna cut to the next camera. See, that's, that's a cut transition. If I push this camera into the other, basically, node, it's gonna build its own transition. Now this is not a dissolve transition, this is a priority transition. It's actually going to physically move the camera in the world from camera three to camera four, watch this. The camera's actually moving positions in the world to wherever I have camera four. That can be very useful if you want the transition to happen. We will do that, but not right here. We're gonna let it cut. And then we're gonna add our third Cinemachine shot, which is going to be camera five. Cut it down, what's 36 plus 18? I don't know, 52, 540, sounds good to me. Now, they don't do anything, and this is where it gets a little confusing. You have to add an animation track. Well, what's the animator? We want camera three to animate. Create animator on VCam3, done. Now we can actually animate VCam3. So what we wanna do with our timeline selected, hit this record button, and now we are recording the changes we're making to VCam3. This is gonna use what's called keyframes. So we're gonna to go to the end of our camera three position, somewhere over here. We could actually do it anywhere along this uh, recording line. And we're going to move the, I want to move the, uh, the rotation, yes, the Y rotation. Not, not at all the Y rotation, I take that back. Make sure you have camera three selected in your hierarchy window and then change its rotation. I think the Y rotation should do, but we'll just make that something like this, 79. What was it, like 30 before? Then we'll come over here and we'll just drop it down to 30. Now you can see that it's made keyframes. Do you see these little dots? Those are keyframes. And if we slide our scrubber along, we can actually see the motion happening. I like that, I'm good with that. So we're gonna stop recording this motion. And if we play the cutscene, we can actually see now we have some motion with camera three. And then it cuts to camera two, which is our dolly camera. And the same thing is going to apply. We're gonna right click, we're gonna create an animation track, and we're gonna drag VCAM4 into the window. Boom, we're gonna animate VCAM4. And the same thing is going to apply. We're gonna hit record. But now here's the thing with camera four, is it's on a dolly track. So we are just gonna make a, uh, we're gonna make a keyframe here, change the path position to one, which is gonna create a keyframe, go back to the start, and then change the keyframe position to zero on the path, boom. So now on our cutscene, it's going to move along its dolly path doesn't rotate to follow the road, and I want it to, so I'm just gonna go to this next keyframe, and again, change that Y rotation for VCAM4 to something really simple like 34, just so the road is centered in this transition. So it, now I've changed the rotation over here to 40. I've gotta change it back because it's only on that one keyframe. So any change you make, you've gotta make sure the other keyframe has it. So I'm gonna make that about 33, 34, I think it was. And so now the camera moves and rotates at the same time. And it's gonna lerp. It's gonna linear interpolate itself to be nice and smooth for us, which is really good. And then we're gonna to cut to VCAM 5, uh, which stays here. But what I wanna do actually is, I think this is in the right position. I am going to grab another scene. Oh, you know what, very important. Make sure you stop recording. That way when you play your cut scene, Let's move our scrubber to the start. We'll play the cutscene. It's gonna follow along. It's already starting to look nice, right? And now we've got our final camera. I don't think that's in the right spot. There we go, we'll tilt that down. So I like that view for camera five. Hit V cams to go back to our timeline. Camera five is active, but I'm also going to drag another camera clip out here. So we're going to add a cinema machine shot and this one's going to be our follow cam. And this is where we're going to take our follow cam, we're going to shorten this up and we are going to allow this camera to transition into our follow camera. But I want that to happen kind of quick. So it's going to be like here's a shot, it's moving and then we're going to zoom in to our actual game footage just like that. So now I th and I think this is gonna happen even if we play the game. Let's check this out. Now our cutscene plays. Awesome. 
Uh, so something else I've done, I've turned off the UI elements. And I've done that for a reason. So if you look at the UI, you can see that all of the UI is just is off. I did that for a reason because the timeline has this built-in activation track. So what we want to do is we want to activate on certain times. So as soon as the camera starts to zoom in, I want to activate the race position. I'm going to do that again and again and again. I'm just going to grab these and line them up with my cutscene. So now I don't have UI elements getting in the way, but they are going to activate and my timer is going to kick off and that's what's going to set the race to active. So let's watch it all. It picks up where we want follows the path that we set, zooms in nicely, and the race starts. But there's an issue because it's keeping our priorities that we set for these cameras. So let's make these priorities nine, so that way they only play for that cutscene, and I, I think that'll be okay, because the cutscene is gonna override our priority. If we go to the game view and make this full screen, this is our follow camera. If we do a play test, it should pick up from our first camera, at a bit of an angle, which I like, I'm fine with that. We follow the dolly camera, we go to the wide view, we zoom in, all of our objects activate, but he stays put and we can just start racing like normal. And now we've got the follow cam. And just like that, making a cutscene is super easy, but there is a trick to it. Now, if you need help getting started, I did make a video that you wanna check out on getting started with Cinemachine. Thanks so much for watching.